Hi everyone, it's Dr. Cambo, and today we're going to focus on the CPT radiology section, which includes codes 70010 all the way over to 79999. So this takes you to page 469 in your CPT manual, which is where the table of contents lies for this section. In the table of contents, you will learn that the radiology section itself is divided into the following major areas. You have diagnostic radiology, your diagnostic ultrasound, radiologic guidance, mammography, bone and joint studies, radiation oncology, and then nuclear medicine. So to begin, let's take a look at the guidelines for the radiology section, which are found on page 472. So first up, one of my favorite guidelines is the guideline related to separate procedures. And whenever I see separate procedure, I always stop and ask myself, where does this patient documentation fall um, given one or three circumstances? So number one, I'm looking at a code. It has the word separate procedure behind it. That is the only code that I plan on using today. Well, life is good. I can code that service. The second scenario that comes to mind is a situation where I'm looking at a code, again, that has the word separate procedure behind it, but my patient has another procedure performed at the same time. And so the question I ask myself is, is this procedure, the separate procedure, related to the other procedure? If the answer is yes, I don't report that separate procedure, that separate procedure gets rolled up into the other procedure. Then the third scenario is I have two procedures being performed today. Um, again, one of them has the word separate procedure included in the code description. But let's say that that second procedure is not related to the first procedure. Then guidelines tells us that we can code both appending a modifier 59 to the specific separate procedure code to just let the payer know that that procedure is not a component of the other procedure that I'm coding for today. Another guideline that's in the radiology section focuses on a special report. And special report is really reserved for those procedures where there is no reimbursement tied. So think about your unlisted procedures. Well, whenever you use an unlisted procedure, we are required to submit a special report to the payer. That report has to have six components. It should include an adequate description or definition of the following six things. So the nature, the extent, the need for the procedure, the time, the effort, and the equipment that was necessary. So ultimately it's the operative note or procedure note, but we have to make sure that all of those areas are documented in the record. Next up, we have guidelines for supervision and interpretation. Now these guidelines were actually updated for 2019. And as you probably have noticed from our other sections, Imaging may be required during the performance of some procedures. Now, you have to be very careful because many of the services in other sections of our CPT manual actually include image guidance. And in those cases, imaging guidance is not a separately reportable service. The CPT code description that you're looking at, it will actually tell you if imaging is actually included in that particular code section. Now, when imaging is not included in a surgical procedure or a procedure perhaps from the medicine section, image guidance codes or codes that are labeled radiological SNI or supervision and interpretation may actually be reported for the portion of the service that actually requires imaging. Of note, all image guidance codes do require certain elements that be documented. You can take a look at that in your CPT manual. 
Next up, we have administration of contrast material. One thing to note is that the phrase with contrast is used in codes for procedures that are performed using contrast for image enhancement. And those procedures are those where contrast is administered either intravascularly, intraarticularly, or intrathecally. For an intraarticular injection, you want to use the appropriate injection coat. If the radiologic arthrography is performed, you're also going to use that arthrography supervision and interpretation code for the appropriate joint as well, and that particular code does include fluoroscopy. Of note, oral and rectal contrast alone do not qualify as with contrast. Last guideline we have here speaks to a written report. A written report signed by the individual that is interpreting the test is a integral component of the radiologic procedure and a written report must be included. Now, with regards to the CPT descriptors for imaging services, images must contain anatomic information that's unique to the patient for which the imaging service is provided. All right, so enough about guidelines. Let's take a look at our code. So starting on page 474, we have our diagnostic radiology codes. And our diagnostic radiology codes are your diagnostic imaging. So here you're going to see procedures like x-rays and CT scans and MRI. As you start to look at these codes, you're going to see a lot of different unique characteristics such as with contrast, without contrast, without contrast, followed by with contrast. Pay attention to those details. Also, some of our codes are divided based upon the number of views, so you want to pay attention to that. And then also, your codes could be divided based upon whether the procedure is bilateral or unilateral. So just like all of the other sections, we have to make sure that we are paying attention to all of the details. All right, next up, we also have codes for diagnostic ultrasound. That's page 493 in your CPT manual. And here you have diagnostic ultrasounds for different parts of the body. In fact, this particular section actually starts off with head and neck. Now, before we get into the codes themselves, there's a couple of things you'll want to note. Number one, all diagnostic ultrasound examinations do require that we have permanently recorded images that contain measurements when measurements are clinically indicated by a particular test. Now, the other thing is, of course, we must have a written report. It has to be in the patient's record. Also, you're going to notice that some of our ultrasound codes are going to use the terminology of complete and limited. You want to take a look at those definitions because they are very important in code assignment. And then also there are definitions that you need to know relative to the type of x-rays or ultrasounds. And those are known as A mode, M mode, B scan, and then real time scan. All right, next up. We're going to go over to fluoroscopic guidance codes. Those fluoroscopic guidance codes are on page 499. This is where our radiologic guidance actually begins. And of note, we do have ultrasound guided procedure codes as well. They actually precede the uh, fluoroscopic guidance codes. And situation that comes to mind immediately regarding um, ultrasound guidance is uh, when a patient is having an amniocentesis that is done via ultrasound guidance. All right, so back to fluoroscopic guidance, page 499. We have two codes available. One of the things I want you to know about these codes is that they are add-on codes, and you know the rule regarding add-on codes. Add-on codes can never be used alone. The other thing that I want to remind you, and this is just about 
CPT coding in general, it's critical that you review your guidelines in front of the section, your subsection notes, and your parenthetical notes. Your parenthetical notes are going to tell you situations when you should not be reporting a code with another code or situations where perhaps an additional code is needed. You're not going to know that that information applies unless you pay attention to those notes. Next up we have CT guidance. Those codes are on page uh, 500 and there's actually a third code for fluoroscopic guidance there uh, again is a, an add-on code so on page 500 we have codes for CT guidance these however are not add-on codes parenthetical notes that are available and these notes again critical for example one of the notes tells you not to report this partic these particular codes, for example, 77012, don't report that code in conjunction with several other codes. Reason being that CT guidance is included in the code. Remember we talked about how some of the codes actually already have the radiologic guidance um, in the code or the CT guidance in the code? You would not use that as a separately reportable service. All right, next up, you have MR guidance, uh, still on page 500, two code options available. And uh, again, parenthetical notes that you have to pay close attention to. Next up, we have our mammography codes. And you'll want to pay close attention because these codes have some very distinguishing characteristics. Number one, they are divided based upon if the service is unilateral or bilateral. These codes are also divided based upon if it is a diagnostic test, diagnostic mammogram, or if it's a screening mammogram. These codes are also divided to identify if computer-aided detection is utilized as a part of the service. Pay close attention to those codes and their descriptions. Next up, we have breast mammography codes. Oh, we just did those. All right, I'm, I was going backwards. So next up, we actually have our bone and joint studies, and those are on page 502. So um, just as an FYI, bone age is the degree of how a patient's bone actually matures. So when you think about a child, think about how um, a person grows from fetus and then puberty and then um, you know to as an adult and the growth period usually finishes when the patient is um, a young adult and so the bones of the skeleton as we grow change in size and shape these changes can actually be seen on um, an x-ray so the bone age of a child is the average age at which the bone of the, the child reaches the stage of what's known as bone maturity and so a child's height and bone age can actually be used to predict their um, adult height so this particular test is designed um, to study the bone and joint and can identify when there is some delay or other abnormalities. All right, next up on page 502, we have radiation oncology. Lots of things going on here, guys. Lots of notes, lots and lots of notes. So radiation therapy, as I'm sure most of you know, is a type of cancer treatment that uses beams that are really intense energy to kill cancer cells. The radiation therapy most often gets its power from x-rays, but it can come from other sources such as uh, protons. And when you look in your CPT manual, you'll get to see those different um, sources. Um, Radiation therapy oftentimes refers to what's known as external beam radiation therapy. And external beam radiation therapy comes from a machine that's actually on the outside of the patient's body that aims beams at a precise 
point on a patient's body. And um, we also can have uh, brachytherapy. And brachytherapy is radiation that's placed on the inside of the body. These are actually code options that are available. I highly recommend that you take a list, take a look at all the options. You want to know why, guys? Well, this particular area starts on page 502. It begins with our consultation clinical management codes, and it just goes on with all the different radiation oncology services. Guys, there are lots of notes, subsection notes, parenthetical notes, guys, you name it, there are notes there. So if you are going to be coding from this specialty, uh, quite naturally, this is a must read section. If you are learning CPT coding for the first time, it probably can be a little bit overwhelming, um, but just read it for um, understanding of what's actually happening and you will be fine. All right, so next up we have the nuclear medicine section. And um, nuclear medicine um, uses um, two types of services. Number one, it could be diagnostic and it could be therapeutic. So diagnostic nuclear medicine is where they're using small amounts of radioactive material to examine a patient's organ function and structure. And so, of course, therapeutic is when radioactive material is actually used to treat cancer and other medical conditions affecting different parts of the body. Now, one of the things that you'll notice, and I forgot to tell you what page this was on, page 510, one of the things that you'll notice, page 510, is that the codes start off with our diagnostic options. And then when you go over to page 515, that's where the therapeutic services begin. But you'll notice that these particular areas are divided by system. So one test that you'll be familiar with as it relates to nuclear medicine, um, think about a bone scan. So a bone scan for diagnosing inflammatory processes such as osteomyelitis or looking for um, osteoporosis. You also have studies here for like cardiovascular heart scans such as a myocardial perfusion and cardiac blood pool imaging. You also can have brain scans to investigate cerebrovascular problems. All right guys, well this has been the radiology section. In our next segment we're going to look at pathology and laboratory. Thank you so much for listening and have a great day.